Hey, hey everybody, Brock Frady here, helping you enjoy your ride. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at this 2022 Mazda MX-5 Grand Touring RF. We're gonna take a look at the outside, the inside. We're gonna end up behind the driver's seat where I'll show you how the buttons work. And then we're gonna take this bad boy for a drive. I would like to say a huge thank you to Impex Auto Sales in Greensboro, North Carolina for the opportunity to film this beautiful Mazda. I'll be sure to leave all of Impex Auto Sales contact information, including their website, in the description box below. The 2022 Mazda Miata MX-5 Grand Touring RF has a front engine rear drive setup. It has a two liter four cylinder, 181 horsepower engine that produces 151 pound foot of torque. Most versions of the Miata have a six speed manual transmission and you can get the Grand Touring like we have here in a manual transmission as well, but this one is an automatic, although it does have a feisty little set of paddle shifters that we'll see here in just a minute. It has a sport tuned suspension with Bilstein dampers, front shock tower brace, and of course a beautiful limited slip differential that works really well. It also comes standard with adaptive front lighting, high beam control, and traffic sign recognition are also included. The Grand Touring has dark silver 17 inch aluminum alloy wheels, body colored heated mirrors with auto dim and door sill trim plates. The headlights feature automatic on and off function and the windshield wipers are rain sensing. Terracotta Napa leather seats are an upgradable option on the Grand Touring and dark interior accents are exchanged for bright silver finishes while heated leather seats, navigation system, automatic climate control, auto dim rear view mirror with home link and a three year XM traffic and travel subscription are also included. Mazda employs something called the Gram strategy which focuses on every minute little bitty detail around and in the vehicle in order to maximize performance and safety while also minimizing weight. I'm sorry I'm gonna get distracted here for just a second but look how beautiful it is under here. This is just a little bitty four cylinder engine, but goodness, Mazda has actually designed this thing to look super sexy under the hood. I mean, take a look at some of the vehicles that are out there today. When you open the hood, it just looks like a jumbled mess of electronic spaghetti. This actually is kind of hot looking. You've got your cylinders right here, your oil fill here, Sky Active G all right there, and it all makes sense. Every, you know, you've got your engine right here, front and center, right in the middle where it's supposed to be, or you know, the layout, they've made it kind of draw your attention right to the middle there with your, well, your battery is right here, and I think I know why, that's gonna be for weight distribution, so it's up, up at the front, but it seems like you kind of put that back in the middle of it. Anyways, then you've got your um, windshield washer fluid here, of course, your brake fluid here on the right, but that's that's a really cool engine setup. The Gram strategy includes using aluminum for the power plant frame, front fenders, hood, and trunk lid, as well as shaving millimeters of various pieces of metal and even foregoing foam in the sun visors. Now, I think by law, you have to have something here in order to uh, dampen a the potential of an engine fire. That's why you have this pad right here, but check out what lies underneath the trunk lid. And, and by the way, as much as I absolutely love the car, the key design is not good. This is just bad news. I've already set off the, the panic alarm twice while this thing's in my pocket. You see that, that, that stack of buttons right there? <laughs> Lock, unlock, hold, and hold. Well, that bottom one right there, and it sticks out. You can, see, you can see that right there. That's your panic alarm. So last night I was in my house and I just heard the car freaking out and I realized, oh my gosh, the key was in my pocket and it hit the panic alarm. That is just a terrible design. Anyways, you press this button and you hold it, it pops the back right here. That's what I was talking about. You see, there is nothing there. Usually there would be some type of cover there. Well, that represents weight that they could remove that and lose that weight. The other thing too is the sun visor. You see this? This is just a hard piece of plastic. There's no soft touch material here and honestly I don't know why soft touch materials are in sun visors anyways but there's a little mirror there but that represents a just a tiny little fraction of weight reduction so you combine that, you combine that and then probably a million other things and it means a lighter vehicle better performance, more fun, that this sexy engine can give you while you're driving. The fit and finish of this interior is absolutely stunning, in relatively speaking, because this vehicle is small and you would therefore 
figure, you know, they're just going to throw it together real quick like and, you know, just be done with it. No siree. Napa leather seats that are heated. Three-way Napa leather heated seats stitching right here in the back. Check this out. It's got the Bose stereo, so you actually have speakers right here in the headrest. There's a little Bose emblem right there on the headrest itself. Fantastic seats. Good bolstering. Honestly, I wish the bolstering were a little bit more uh, pronounced. On a lot of vehicles, it's too much. On this one, I think it honestly, it could, it could use a little more bolstering. But there is stitching all over this thing. There on the steering wheel, seats of course, the shifter, the emergency brake, on the dash, on the doors, it's just everywhere. And I love how the contrast stitching is right here on the door. It's orange and black. That is just absolutely gorgeous. You have a little bit of a carbon fiber looking material. I know it's just plastic, but it adds a little bit of a sex appeal to it. You also have a painted, a body color painted panel right here. And I think honestly, the reason that this is plastic and not metal and is not covered in leather is to save weight, which this car is all about. Very cool climate control little outlets right there. But you know what's one of the things that's funny about this? Is the fact that you've got one here, one here, one there, and then this tiny little bitty horizontal linear one right there. I don't really get that, but you know, it's there. You could actually cover it up with like two fingers. But the, the interior of it just looks really, really nice. Now, the interior on the ones that are not the Grand Touring, I think these pieces, there are some like silver points or silver materials that are on this one that are not on the lower models. But man, this is just a super luxurious looking interior. Again, the interior is small. It's, it's not very roomy, but you're not about you're stretching out and laying around in this thing you're about driving and focus and that's what this cabin is geared toward pun intended over here on the left side is going to be traction control off and that's your lane warning system and we're definitely going to cut that off because that thing is pretty sensitive uh, then you have some uh, steering wheel audio controls bluetooth over here on the left um, cruise control over here on the right paddle shifters here upshift on the right side, downshift on the left side, then of course your headlights and turn signal and your wipers over here that are on the right. Uh, these are rain sensing wipers because there is a little uh, eye right here that monitors the windshield for brake in light and it knows that whenever it senses a break in the light due to water being on the glass, it's going to automatically wipe the windshield. Very cool feature. Uh, beautiful climate control system. The reason I say that's beautiful is because it's so easy to work. No frills, nice silver dials, nice and big, all good. Over here on the left side is going, at the bottom is going to be how you work your convertible top. To the right of that on the far end is going to be heated seat, three-way heated seats for your driver and your passenger. A little bit of storage here, an SD card slot here, and then uh, device charging here. This is going to be your automatic shifter. I wish this had a manual, but it just does not, and that's okay. This is your sport button or uh, toggle and when you push this forward you see a little icon on the dash that says sport and man it goes into sport mode especially from the aspect of hanging in a high gear it's it it, it so whenever you are going to be throwing it around on a curvy road flip this up into sport and you will be glad you did uh, right here is going to be controls for music or audio your home button your nav system this is kind of like an all-in-one selector mode all big dial right there and then this is going to be for volume you can cut the radio on and off by pushing this turning it for volume back button and favorites button you have a little bit of storage right here and when i say little bit that's what i mean by that these are really cool cup holders right here you can pull those out and you can see they are movable so you can see you have two slots right here for cup holders and so you can just take that and put it in right there and that's for the passenger then for the driver but then you also have another slot right here for cup holders in case this is occupied or whatever you have also a position for a cup holder here I've never seen actually detachable movable cup holders inside a cabin of a vehicle before but there they are then you have a little box right here and that's got 
a little bit of uh, like console storage right there. And the reason that is there is because you have no glove box. This thing literally does not have a glove box. Home link right here in your rear view mirror. So you have one, two, three. That's going to be for garage and gate uh, control, garage door and gates. Um, so that's kind of it. Let's take a look at how that convertible top works from the perspective of inside the cabin. So I'm going to put my foot on the brake. The key is inside the vehicle. Start her up. There's our start sequence. That's kind of nice right there. And so here is the toggle in order to uh, do the top up and down. It's interesting, you push the toggle down and the top goes up. You push the toggle up and the top goes down. It's a little bit opposite. So there we go. And then you have a little graph right there on the dash that says it's going. And here we go. And that's it. With that beep, it is secure. You can see here between the driver and the passenger seats, there's a plastic panel. And but beyond that is the actual rear window with the defrost and all that stuff lines in it. This is a removable panel, so you can actually lift this up. And I think what it's going to do is create a lot more wind when this top is actually back. I don't know why you would want to remove that, but it's a removable panel of plastic between the seats. One of the things that I would have loved to have seen in the gauge cluster is all digital. You can see on the far left, you can tell that it's waving. You see how it's kind of wavy right there because of the refresh rate of the camera because that is a digital image. And I, I really, really like the way that layout is. It is a very clean black and white digital layout. The middle is the tachometer and then the right side is the speedometer. I like the layout initially. It's, it's fine, but I would like to see the tachometer and the speedometer actually be digital in order to match with the one on the far left, which has your trip A, trip B, your average miles per gallon, your temperature outside, your fuel gauge, and then the middle, like I said, is the tack and the gear that you're in. And then on the right side is going to be your speedometer. One of the things about the Miata that I do not like is the infotainment system. It is antiquated. It is unbelievably slow. And the Bluetooth is a dumpster fire. The only pass that I give it is the fact that the car is so fun to drive that hopefully you're not going to be looking at the infotainment system because you won't like it. <laughs> let's take a quick look at it. The infotainment system is almost like an afterthought. It's like, let's build the perfect little road car and then let's just throw whatever random infotainment system we can find on the clearance section at Walmart. Yeah, you, you can tell I don't like it. Well, here it is. So you have this big dial right here. That's fine. This setup is okay, whatever. But it's also touchscreen and that's, that's good too. You can't swipe but you know, whatever. So now I'm gonna be turning this dial. There's communication, there's navigation, settings, all the way back over to the left to applications. Entertainment. So I'm gonna start here in applications. I don't have any applications that I've downloaded or anything, but you can see XM Travel Link, Apple CarPlay. I do like the fact that it has wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, good deal, that's great. So we're gonna go back now. Then we're going to go entertainment and this is going to be audio the radio is actually i'm going to turn the radio on so we're going to turn it way down so then uh, along here on the bottom and again it's touch screen and you can select with this big dial down here so you can see that it's it's touch screen this touch screen though whenever you're working it with pandora or any other type of streaming service it does not work well and the screen does not update in real time at all it shows you the first song that you're playing from your streaming service and then the the screen sticks there and when you go to a different song it doesn't pick up it doesn't update at all so you're driving along you could be driving along for an hour and this that song that you played first is still on there going back to the home screen there's navigation navigation system is clunky it's pixelated and it's old it is really old uh, and then right here is settings so these are going to be all the settings uh, for your vehicle and display and you have safety and now uh, going up here to safety 
blind spot monitor, lane departure warning, traffic sign recognition. That's 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 a cute little feature. It's kind of unnecessary because all the traffic sign recognition system does is right here over on the far left. If the eye up here senses a stop sign, it's going to show a stop sign right there when you can actually look out your windshield and see the stop sign. You probably are going to see it before the eye does, but it's 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 okay. So there's your sound, there's your clock. We're gonna scroll over and Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, all the settings right there. So that's all I'm gonna say about the settings for the nav system and all that stuff, infotainment. Now, let's focus on driving this beautiful little pocket rocket. I cannot believe the turning radius of this thing. Check this out. The drive of the Miata is a pretty unique experience because the cabin is absolutely minuscule. It is 100% tiny. <laughs> and uh, being a, a person that is over six feet tall, if I were much taller than I am, I'm 6'3", if I were 6'5", you could forget about getting in this thing because you can see my head and uh, it's, it's right there on the roof. In fact, I can feel it. The other thing too is, if you were much bigger than about a buck 85 uh, or wider than me, it's gonna be a super tight fit. The feel of the cabin <laughs> is still pretty claustrophobic. Everything is right up on you. Uh, my knees are super close to the dash. But here's the thing about it. I think that that lends itself to the whole driving dynamic of it because you're so low on the ground. Everything is so compact and so tight. The steering wheel is right up on you, but that allows you to feel everything more closely. It basically gives you more of a sense of connectivity to the road and to the car itself. Um, you can really, really just feel everything. Uh, coming in and not out of corners like when you're when you're in a hairpin and 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 you're really pushing it hard you really feel the G's because you're just so well connected to your surroundings mainly the tarmac I love the way when you look out of the windshield you can see the humps in the hood on the left and the right it almost reminds me of being in a miniature Corvette in a way Right now, I'm driving in kind of a residentially type area, so I'm not pushing it hard, but it gives me a chance to know what the day-to-day -day driving dynamic of this thing would be. I, I took a ride with another passenger last night, and she said that she could actually drive this thing every single day. I don't think that that would be doable for me because it, it, in spite of how fun it is and how wonderful this thing drives and the feel and everything of it, it just is, to me, is, is, is a weekend little getaway, running the errands, going to the parkway, throwing it around in some curves, having a good time, rolling around with the top down and listening to music and then putting it in the garage. One of the ways that this little thing shines Honestly, it sounds kind of funny, but is that a stoplight when you're turning right? I wish it were stick shift, but that's just a blast. <laughs> just, just coming away from a stoplight. And you know why you do it? Because you can. Okay, everybody, that's going to do it for our look and drive at the 2022 Mazda Miata. I would love to hear what you think about it in the comments section down below. And if I have earned your subscription, then hit that subscribe button and give it a big fat thumbs up so that I can keep bringing you videos just like this one. But remember, the most important thing of all, have a wonderful day, everybody.